been on the splicing kick since I made those continuous loops the other day. I ended up making some whoopee slings. I made some soft shackles for my suspension. And what we're going to talk about in today's episode of I have too much free time on my hands, we're going to make some soft shackles for your tarp connections if you have a continuous ridge line. These work pretty well. Uh, you can see the button at the end, and then it just gets run through a loop, and that pops out. So I figured I'd show you how to make these. That's just another thing to add to your arsenal of DIY projects. One thing to note is that if you're making these tarp soft shackles, it's a different technique than if you were going to make the ones for your hammock suspension. Uh, the knot on this is rated to a higher breaking strength to support the excess weight that's going to be applied to it. Whereas on a tarp, you just basically use it for a connection uh, between the tarp itself and your continuous ridge line. So let's get out our stuff and get to work. All right, so here's how we build our soft shackles. These are the tools that you're going to need. You're going to need a tape measure. You're going to need some form of a fish tool. This is a piece of thermostat wire that I just have bent in half and has an eye at one end. Makes it good for sticking inside of the cordage. You need a marker to mark a couple points along the cord. A pair of scissors. Any punch will do. Um, you don't even really need to use this. This is an awl and I like this because it gets in between the strands of the cord. If you prefer, you could just use this fish tool to get in between the cords. It's whatever uh, your preference is. And then when we make the loop, I just like to put a safety pin inside of it so that way it doesn't back out. And then we're going to be using 1.75 millimeter zingit for our tarp soft shackle. So the first thing we need to do is get a piece of cord that is 20 inches long. Put out our tape measure. Put it at 20 and cut a piece That is 20 inches long. All I have to do is make a couple measurements. So we'll just start at the 20. And the first mark is going to be at the two and a half inch mark. So we'll count one, two, and a half. Just make a little mark there. And then I just move it over to the inch line so that's easier to, to see. The next mark is going to be an inch and three quarters away from that first mark. Right there. And then the next mark is going to be an inch and a half from that second mark that you made. So you should have three marks. First one two and a half inches from the end. Next one an inch and three quarters from that one. And the next one an inch and a half from that one. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to the middle mark. We're going to open it up. I like to open it up on both sides so that you know that it's open. You're going to take your punch or your fish tool and you're going to go through the middle part of the cord to make a hole. What you're going to do is you're going to pass the end through that hole. Okay, so that's going to be the first thing you do so that you see that that formed a loop. So after you do that, next thing you do is go to the last mark that you made. We're going to open up that. Once again, take your punch or whatever else you have to make a hole. And then you're going to insert the end again, the end through that hole. Now this time you're going to pass it through until you see the first black mark pass through the hole. Now you're going to open that up. 
Once again, find the middle. Make a hole. Now you're going to pass the long end of the cord through that hole. Pull it all the way through. You want to make sure that it doesn't have any kinks in it, which so should be nice zigzag pattern. Pull that all the way down and we just made a locked brummel. So take your safety pin or cord or whatever else you want, put it on the eye part because that's going to be your loop that is adjustable. I'm going to pull that tight. And now we're going to bury the tail back into the core of this. So what I do here is I just loosen up, I don't know, maybe like a half an inch. And this doesn't have to be too crazy. But just break up these strands. Take your scissors and just cut that at an angle. just to have that transition from the buried, the taper makes it a little bit smoother transition. Come past it like an inch, open that up, insert your fish tool, and then push it all the way down I like to push it and then milk it through. It helps it come through a little bit easier if your fish tool starts bending. So you want to get it so it's right at the end of where that locked brummel is. And then we're going to pop out as close to that knot as possible right in the middle of the strands. Come out. Open that up, insert that taper right into the middle, fold it over, close it up, and then just pull the berry through until it comes out. We got that. Milk it out to bury that cord. And we have the working part of the shackle. So you can see that when it's when we get the other part made with the knot. It'll slide into here. And this is just so you can take it, make it bigger or smaller. So that'll be the working part. So that's that side. Then we're going to come down to this end. And we're going to measure two inches. Make a mark. You're going to fold fold it over at that two inch mark back on itself. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna bury this tail into this cord. So same thing, we're just gonna break up the strands around a half an inch from the end. Take your scissors and same thing, just cut it at an angle. Got it two inches, go up an inch past there, open that up, 
take your fish tool, stick it right into the core, and you're going to run it all the way down until it gets to that mark that you made where you folded it over. And once you're at that mark, you're going to pop out of the middle. Same thing, open it up, insert your tapered end in, and then I'm going to pull it straight down. And I like to pull it down until right before the end gets buried the whole way. In case you have to pull it back out, you can still grab it. And that's that side. I like to fold it over right where the berry ends. So that way the knot's as fat as it can be. Lift the knot. Insert it into the first hole. And this is your soft shackle. So with this you get a loop that's roughly five inches. But the good thing about this size is because you're going to be attaching it to your tarp, you would prussic this around your continuous ridge line. And with this size you can get five wraps around your continuous ridge line and it still allows the end portion right here to go around your tarp and have access to this knot. So normally I use around four loops, but in case it's a little bit loose and comes loose, you have the ability to put that extra wrap on your continuous ridge line to keep it a little bit more taut. I just set my ridge line up and I'll show you guys how to hook these up to the ridge line. So I like to put it with the knot on the outside of whichever side you're on. So on this side, I have it on this side. On the other side of the tarp, I'll have it on that side. And it just allows the knot to grab like this now. So get put it in the middle. Put the, uh, the buried part on the bottom, right like that. Then you're going to just wrap it through itself. One. Two. Making sure you get that knot in there. Three. And I like to do four times. If you need a little bit more bite, you can do another one or a little less, you can take one out. So we'll dress the knot, clean it all up. So that is how it gets attached to the ridge line. Take this out. There's the two parts of the shackle. Grab the end of the tarp, put it through, put the shackle or the knot through the loop, and that is it. That'll pull on it, give it some tension, and that is your soft shackle. So that'll maintain tightness because of the prussic knot on it and then the knot will maintain its integrity because of uh, its design so that's just another way to attach your tarp to the ridge line uh, if you want to try a different method and then if you want to take it off just loosen it up take the pressure off of it Undo that loop as much as you can. 
and then the knot will just slide out of it. Tarp off. Then if you want to store it on your ridge line, you could leave it like this, or you could just put the knot back in. And now it's good to go for next time. So if you wanted to, you could experiment with a couple different types of lengths. Uh, if you wanted to increase their size or decrease their size. I like the 20 inches because it lets you do the four or five wraps around your CRL without getting in the way. Um, and then still have enough <clears throat> to be able to work with it. So that's all I got. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. Uh, other than that, this is Nick with Triple Nickel Outdoors. Get out there and hang.